Ooh, this is stressful. I'm recording. How's my hair look? Nobody's there to answer you, Pam. So yesterday, I filmed a few videos with Dr. Mike, who is a good friend of mine, and I realized that there were a lot of things I didn't say exactly like I wanted to, so I thought I'd do my own videos. Thanks for coming to hang out with me. And if you dislike me, I get it. Most of my family does. There's probably some kind of a support group for that. But I'm thrilled you're here anyway. Thrilled? What am I, 50? And I thought this first video would be questions people ask me. There are hundreds. I've collected hundreds. But I thought I'd start with a few and go from there. And I, like, want to look at the camera, but also I have, like, a whole lot of Tourette's. So I'm going to look wherever I'm going to look. And it might be, like, in circular motions. Ooh, I'm also going to try so hard not to edit my Tourette's out of these videos. That feels really brave and scary for me. For some reason, I have no shame when I have Tourette's in real life. I have no shame having Tourette's on stage. And yet, when I watch and edit a video and my Tourette's is a-going, I have this desire to edit it out. Because you can. Because on YouTube, you can. But I'm going to say it here. My goal is not to. My goal is to let you see me ticky ticky temboing away. And if I bark, I will include it. And I'm extra barky today because it was a stressful day. First question. I'm going to read them off of my phone. Who is Pam? That is a good question. And I don't know how to answer that. Who the hell am I? I don't I don't know. Does any if you know how to answer who you are, all power to you. Comment below. Tell me who you are. Here's what I do now. My name is Pamela Ray Schuler. I am a professional stand-up comedian and speaker and advocate. Who am I? I am resilient. I am, I think, witty. I am wildly inappropriate. We'll talk about that. I've been in a lot of trouble for that throughout the years. I am inspired to make the world a better place for people who feel different. And I am riddled with anxiety at any given moment. What is Tourette's? That's a great question. Tourette's is a neurological disorder. So I was born with it. it means you can't catch it, despite what I tell you when I have a glass of wine. And it means I do movements and noises that I can't control. They're called tics, T-I-C-S, not the bugs. I don't have those. Petrified of those. <coughs> Ooh, oh, hey -oh! If you saw that, it's because I was feeling brave today, and I did not take that out. Ten points, Pam. How tall are you? Four foot six and a half. That half is incredibly important because it's the difference between between being almost four foot seven and fully four foot six. Glass half full. And yes, I am officially a little person. I prefer a lot of different words for it, but you all don't know me well enough yet for me to offend all of you. I am super short. I'm like Oompa loompa e short. I'm like when I hug people, I accidentally motorboat them all the time short. I'm like I taste farts before I smell them short. I'm done now. <laughs> do I date? Yeah. I have a feeling they were asking like, do you date other people with Tourette's? And like, I don't feel like that's a requirement. We could bark at each other. It would be very Lady in the Tramp. What gives you optimism? I really think that there's this like potential for us to have a world where when someone sees me twitching, they don't try to figure out what my diagnosis is. They just are like, oh yeah, yeah, that, that adorable little human twitches. I tell my story around the world. I connect with so many people after the performance. People will line up to talk to me. I just believe that we are on track to create this world where people who are different, disability or otherwise, are just embraced for whoever they are and whatever they bring to the community. What is my greatest superpower? I talk about this a lot on stage, but I really think Tourette's is my greatest superpower. I think it was the hardest thing that I went through. I had the worst diagnosed case of Tourette's any doctor's ever seen. I was out of school for years, broken bones. Um, I lost control over my, my full body. Going through those years, that I think has made me more resilient. And I think my resilience is what allows me to have a career and be a comic and be comfortable getting on stage all of the time. My Tourette's was really tough and is still really tough, but I also think it's my superpower if I look at it like that. 
when do you feel most vulnerable on stage? I mean, Being a performer is being vulnerable for a living. When you're a comic, like you get on stage and you tell one joke that people don't like and the air gets sucked out of the room and a room simultaneously dislikes you. If a comic has told you they have not bombed on stage, they are lying to your face. (coughs) Did you think that was coughing? It was Tourette's. Okay. When do you feel most control on stage? Okay, when you are telling a story and you pause and you can hear the pin drop in a room, it is the best feeling in the world because it's that feeling of like, I have them. They're on board for this roller coaster of a story and I like, "Mm, I love that feeling. And on the flip side, when people are laughing hysterically at your joke and you can literally like do a little wiggle or do something weird and people are on board or you can go in a direction you had never thought you were going in and people like are laughing at it and you're like, yes, this audience is full of weirdos and they're along for the ride. That's when I feel most in control. What would you want to say to your younger self? So I think I would say to my younger self, the fact that it sucks for you doesn't make you any less strong or resilient. I was suicidal by sixth grade um, and hospitalized for it and really struggled and had a tough family and a parent dying and I went through the ringer and I don't think anything that I could go back and say would make it better because I think it was designed to suck. But I think I would go back and say like, just let's like start finding love. Let's like find love for yourself while all of this sucks. For me, by the way, sense of humor was the first thing about myself that I loved and I wish I would have found it sooner. Someone asked, how does Tourette's affect you? So at this point, it affects me differently than it did when I was a kid. Not better, not worse, just different. You might not notice my Tourette's right away. It's a lot of little movements and noises that you can't see, but I feel constantly. It's a lot of tensing my stomach muscles. It's like a miracle I don't have a six pack. It's winking a lot, making a lot of funny faces, little noise clicking, hissing on airplanes, uh, tensing my fingers. When I was a kid, the movements were a lot more physical and intense. I embraced the hell out of my Tourette's. I could not have asked for a more perfect for me neurological disorder if I tried. I love it. I love it. I still have a severe case of Tourette's. It's just different in how the world sees it, but not how and I feel it. Does that make sense? It doesn't usually scare me, but I am not used to doing it on the camera. Okay. I should have let it out for a second. Okay. Now we're good. I cannot believe I'm going to put this on the interwebs. I had a teacher in third grade that made me stand in a corner if I didn't have happy eyes. Turns out you can't train a neurological disorder. Who knew? Who knew? What are your coping mechanisms? Stand up. And like, if you're considering being a comic, no, it's a tough life. It's a tough world. But... For me, living in New York City means that when I'm having a really tough day, when Tourette's is bad, when I'm struggling, when I'm depressed, I hop on stage and I do stand up and it like centers me in a way that nothing else does. When did you reach 4'6"? In third grade. So I was like average height for an hour and a half. I killed it that week. What was your favorite speaking or stand up experience? Ooh, gosh, that's a good one. I did a show recently, and it was one of the smallest shows I've ever done. It was maybe 20 people, and it was a room of people with disabilities, all different, from limb differences to cerebral palsy to people who use wheelchairs. It just was like a fully inclusive space, and I did my one-hour, one-woman show, which is like comedy and storytelling with a message. I loved every minute of it. When I told sad stories, they cried so hard we had to pause to patch tissues around. When I told jokes, people were crying because they were laughing so hard. There was like so much snot. It was like so lovely. It just was one of those shows where every minute of it filled me and I just didn't expect it. Like small crowds are tough, Uh, just in pure stand up. Once did a comedy club in the Midwest, I will not say where. This one was packed, it was probably 500 people. And there was a bachelorette party there. So fun as a comic because everyone was very sober. My set went very well. It was great. I killed. And at the end of the show, there was no bathroom for comics. So I was in the bathroom with people who had just seen me perform. And I hear a girl puking. And she goes, can someone hold my hair back? So I'm 
I'm holding her hair back while she's puking and she's puking and she goes, oh my gosh, I loved your set. That was also my favorite. <laughs> Next question is, what was my least favorite show? There are many. <laughs> and any comic who tells you otherwise is lying to you. And sometimes it's my fault, like, right? So, by the way, look, I just, like, feel like I'm so weird tonight. Sometimes it's my fault. Like, sometimes I am not on my timing, or I forget what I'm doing, or I see something shiny. But I got on stage, and I started by talking about being Jewish, and somebody yelled, what's a Jew? And I was like, rat row. Somebody asked a question that also is doubling as a compliment. When did you realize you are incredibly funny? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Am I supposed to feel funny? At boarding school, I got in trouble for a ton of fantastic things. That's going to be its own video. They had to channel my like snarky, quirky inappropriateness into something. And comedy just flowed out of me. So I don't think I realized. I think I realized I was funny when I was in high school. I still haven't realized if I, I still don't know if I can make a living doing it. I mean, I have made a living doing it now for a few years, but I still feel very terrified every day. I'll do another video because questions on social media are still streaming in. Follow me on Instagram at Pamela Comedy. At some point, I'm going to be posting bloopers from my video with me and Dr. Mike, stuff that his page can't have because I was dirty. I hope my comedy doesn't offend you. Sometimes I cross boundaries and push lines and crawl under and over things that I'm not supposed to. Thanks for watching. Thanks for letting me be me. And I hope you do you. You do you, boo. You do you. That's not going to be how I end every video because I hated it when it came out of my mouth. A question just came in that I literally had to restart this video to answer, and it is, do you ever pee a little when you bark? And the answer is, only when I get like really excited because it's the mailman.